Hello friends, this video on comparing quantities part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let's see where do we use percentages in real life. So do we really use them in our day to day activities? Yes, we do. So, so these were our takeaways from the last slide. Right? That proper fractions means less than 100%, improper fractions means more than 100%. So let us take one example each from our day-to-day -day life where we get to see that why proper fractions correspond to less than 100% and why improper fractions correspond to more than 100%. Let's look at this one. Now, if we ask you that how much percent of the pizza can you eat so what would be that value? Do you think that percentage can be more than 100%? It can't be, right? Because you just have that one pizza. There is no other option. That nobody is going to bring you more pizza. So your percentage would always be less than or equal to 100%. How? That's because let us assume that if you cut that pizza into equal slices, you get a total of say five slices. So you can either eat one out of five slices or you can eat two out of five slices or you can eat three out of five slices or four out of five slices or five out of five slices. So these are the possible options. And when you look at these possible options, you see all of them are proper fractions because the numerator is smaller. And when the numerator and denominator are equal, that time the percentage is exact 100%. Now, do you think that you can eat six slices of the pizza out of five slices? No, because you have a total of five slices. So how can you eat six slices? You do not have six slices at all. Right. So in this scenario, you will always end up having proper fractions and therefore your percentage will always be less than 100%. Let's look at another scenario. Let's say that this is a shopkeeper who is selling this book. Right. Now this shopkeeper, how did he get the book? Now he runs a bookshop, but that doesn't mean that he is making those books. So he is buying these books from maybe the wholesale market. So he is buying the books from the wholesale market. So the price which he is paying to buy these books is the cost price. So that is the price with which he is buying the book. Now, when the shopkeeper is selling the book to the customers, then the price which they pay to get this book is the selling price. Right now, it is possible that maybe this person has purchased this book for say rupees, let's say 10. And now when he has to sell this, he is selling it at a price of rupees 20. So he bought it for 10 and he is selling it for 20. So in this case, if you see the selling price is more than the cost price. Correct. So what is happening here in this case? The increase is 100%. The increase can be more than 100% also because the selling price can be anything. If he wants, he can sell it for 20. If he wants, he can sell it for 50. If he wants, he can sell it for 100. So basically the increase can be anything. And since the increase can be anything, so if you calculate his profit percentage, so if you calculate his profit percentage, that can definitely be more than 100%. He can have a profit percentage of 150%, of 200%, 900%. Right? So the profit percentage can increase. Now, how do we calculate profit percentage is something that we will discuss a little later. But in this example, you can understand that there is no limit to the increase that can happen. Now, since there is no limit to the increase that can happen, so definitely you end up having improper fractions. Right? Because in this case, let us say that the shopkeeper is selling the same book for rupees 100. So he bought it for 10 and he's selling it for 100. So how much is the increase? So the increase in price is basically 100 minus 10, which is 90. So rupees 90 is the increase. So when you look at the fraction of increase, so this increase is on the cost price 10. So 90 by 10. So what is it? It is an improper fraction. So when you convert it into percentage, you are going to get a value which is greater than 100%. So these are two examples from our real life. In one example, we saw that we always end up getting proper fractions and therefore less than 100%. In the other example, we can get improper fractions and therefore more than 100%. 
So now let us see how do we convert a percentage into fractions. Fraction to percentage we already saw. Now it is just the vice versa. Now here you really do not have a lot of steps. A percentage is always a numerator divided by 100. So let us look at a few examples. Let's look at example 1. Let's say that you have 54%. And you have to convert this into fraction. So what is the meaning of 54%? It means 54 out of 100. So now what is this? This is nothing but a fraction. So we will try to reduce it to the simplest form because there exists equivalent fractions, right? So you see if you have any such digit which can divide both the numerator and the denominator. So what is that? A common factor, right? So two. 2 is a 4, 2 7 is a 14, so 2 into 27 is 54, 2 into 50 is 100, so you get 27 by 50. So what is this? This is a proper fraction. Now the value of the percentage was less than 100, so we were expecting to get a proper fraction. Let's look at example number 2. Let's say you have 12%. So 12% is nothing but 12 out of 100. So again, when you simplify this, it would be 2, 6 is 12, 2 into 50 is 100, 2, 3 is 6, 2, 25 is 50. So this is going to be 3 by 25, which again is a proper fraction. And therefore, you have 12%, which is less than 100%. Now, let us look at some percentages which are greater than 100. Let's talk about 101%. What would be this value? This would be 101 by 100 and this is the simplest form. So 101 by 100 is an improper fraction. Let's look at yet another example, say 150%. How can you write 150? It can be written as 150 divided by 100. So 5, 3 is a 15, 5, 2 is a 10. 10, 3 is a 30, 10, 2 is a 20. So this is 3 by 2. So 3 by 2 again is an improper fraction. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.